Alright, this is another kit review, this time of a much bigger rocket than you've seen the other two. This is the Level 2 from FG Components. Uh, I built this rocket earlier this summer, so there won't be a build video. I don't have any video of me doing it. I will, however, link to uh, FG Components' build video, which is probably much better than anything I'm going to do. Uh, it is a bigger rocket, which is why I'm standing over here. I will go grab it now and fly it in. And you can see just how horrible my paint job is. You actually probably can't see it from there. Um, it's a little bit twisted. It is. I am just about six feet. This rocket is just about six feet tall. Uh, it is all fiberglass, so it's a big bit heavier than your normal, uh, you know, paper tube rocket. Uh, it's four fins. Uh, they do not protrude below the bottom. This rocket was very specifically designed. As a kit to get your level 2 high power certification. I already got it on a different rocket because um, I wasn't sure if this was going to come in time for NSL this year or I was going to be done building it in time for NSL this year more. Um, it is a very, very good rocket. There are a few things I don't like about it. Um, it is designed and sold exclusively by FG Components, but it is a Mad Cow rocket. Uh, Mad Cow makes very good uh, kits. I like them. Few things I think they could go a little bit better parts wise, but they are actually very cheap for what they are, too. Um, I have made some modifications to this. I have put basically one big modification is I put an aero pack retainer on here. Uh, I don't have the uh, screw on cap right here, it's somewhere in my room. But uh, that's for motor retention. They do not give you motor retention with this kit. Basically, no high power kit comes with motor retention. I think. Uh, some PML kits maybe, but the very, very few kits will actually come with uh, motor retention. It's kind of up to you. I always get, it's a, it's a $260 rocket. It's going to have at least $80 worth of electronics in it. I'm going to buy the best motor retention on the market, which right now is going to be uh, the uh, Aeropack retainers for uh, retainers. Uh, now to the kit. Parts I like, all fiberglass, which is kind of a pain to actually work with. Um, but it paints up really nice, even though I still managed to screw it up. Uh, working with it's a real pain because you have to wear uh, a respirator is what I use. Um, I happen to be allergic to wood dust, so whenever I do any woodworking, I have a respirator instead of just a dust mask. It helps a lot. Um, so I just use that when I do this. Uh, long sleeve shirt, uh, the nitro gloves, anytime you're machining it, make sure you wash it down. And... Uh, Make sure you're vacuuming away all the dust and you're doing it someplace you're not doing it around kids or anything like that. You don't want anybody to get mesothelioma or anything like that. Um, but it's really not that too terrible to work with. All right, uh, other things. It is a dual deploy rocket, which means it has both a front portion and a rear portion. And this is the electronics bay. The rear portion is where you're going to put your drogue chute. And do I have it in here? Uh, I think I should the drogue chute up here temporarily. It comes with a nylon retaining cord. It works, but nylon kind of time after time is going to get a little crusty. Um, but it seems to be just fine with me. Uh, it comes with, when you get it from FG, it comes with uh, chute protectors for both the drogue and the main parachute, which I really, really like. But I uh, don't think that means you can skimp on the. Uh, the wadding. You still need wadding with these kits. Um, I just use what is called dog barf in the rocketry world. It's lone cellulose uh, insulation. It's biodegradable. It's dirt cheap. Uh, you can pick up a, a two cubic feet of it compressed at Home Depot for seven forty nine, and that will be that will be more than enough for all of your rocketry needs for quite a while. Uh, one of the things it does not come with, which I wish it did. Were quick links, but these are cheap. You can buy them in any hardware store, any home building, uh, home store like Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Menards. So that's basically the bottom half. It's got through every high power kit is going to have, unless it's a minimum diameter kit, it's going to have through uh, through wall fin mounts. So these fins actually go through the body tube and mount to the motor mount tube on the inside. Um, there's and then you can put a fillet on either end. Uh, both on the bottom side of the fin and on the top side of the fin. It makes some super strong uh, G10 fiberglass fins. 
which is a high strength, uh, high compression composite, or high heat, high temp composite. Um, they basically squeeze fiberglass and heat it up while it's curing. It's, it's a really, really strong fit. Uh, it uses rail buttons, regular uh, one inch rail buttons. That's not the width of the rail button, that's the width of the rail they go on. 80-20 rail. 80-20 is the main company that kind of popularized the rail. One inch rail. Comes with an electronics bay. It's 12 inches long. Uh, all fiberglass again. It comes with a ring for it. Um, there are certain things I don't like about this. One of the things I do like about it is uh, the sled is compatible with the, the four inch cardboard fiber one cardboard ones, it's actually the exact same sled I have it uh, oh, right over here actually. And I'll move in close for this. This is uh, untouched basically, I just glued it together. I still have the one from another rocket that already has the electronics mounted on it, so I just, uh, actually I think I have that over here too. Oh, <coughs> uh, here it is. I have a perfect flight and a 9 volt battery uh, locked up on there and, uh, and a button on there. Some straps. You just drill a few more holes in this and mount everything. Uh, one of the things I do not like about the kit, well, the kit doesn't come with, uh, it comes with all the necessary hardware to put this together, but it doesn't come with the terminal blocks, which are rather cheap. I'm assuming he's getting this prepackaged and built from Mad Cow. Um, but you can buy these on after you go on this website. You can also buy them uh, on Amazon for really, really cheap. Um, I have to have Amazon Prime, so two-day shipping, that's how I got that. It does not come with an ejection charge cup, but uh, once again, you go to Menor Menards, Home Depot, or anything like that. This is actually a uh, chair protector, the bottom of the leg, so you can put this over that. These work very, very well at this done many, many launches on this. This is 100% in condition. Um, the thing I don't like about this is a, it is, uh, if you see here, there's very little of the threaded rod that's holding these end caps on. Actually uh, comes out either end. So it's, it's very, I wish maybe an inch longer on these threaded rods would be really, really nice. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad. Uh, it fit together really, really well. This, all of this kit fit together really well. I didn't really need to do any real sanding. Um, and unlike a cardboard kit, fiberglass kit, you're not going to really care about the humidity, so it's going to fit the same way where you build it and where you launch it. You don't have to worry about putting masking tape on this unless it's already too thin, which it wasn't for me. It's actually a little tight, which is fine. A little tight's better than a little loose. Um, as far as the parachutes, that is probably my next biggest gripe about this. Um, I don't think these parachutes are of the highest quality. Uh, this particular rocket, I know I said I, I put many ejection charges through these. I actually put ejection charges through my uh, cardboard rocket. Uh, the parachutes on these are, I've only launched this rocket twice, and these are already, uh, I use... I use wadding, I use the parachute protectors. You already got holes on it. This is a really, really thin material. It is ripstop nylon, but it's really thin. Um, the I I you know, this is the same. This is, looks like a braided nylon string to these. I'm not too thrilled about this. It is sewn on. Um which is really good, even though this is only a tiny amount, the sewing on it, it's being sewn on is actually really, really strong. And the edges are also iron, so I guess that's that's all right. But I've already got holes. That's the drogue parachute you get with it. Um, I believe it's a 24 inch. It looks like the main parachute has much thicker uh, parachute lines. It is a thicker material, but I still still have holes in this one. Uh, after just two launches. Uh, I mean, that's... It's alright. You can probably stand a few more launches. 
Um, and for $269, you're not going to get $80 parachutes with this thing. Uh, so it's a really, really good price for the air rocket. I'm just, I'm just folding it up so I can put it away now, so I not going to get launch ready or anything. Um, again, the top is nylon, and this looks like it's probably 7 16 nylon or half an inch, basically. Um, it's probably a metric measurement, but 7 16 is as close as they get. Uh, this stuff is all right. Um, you get another shoot protector for the top. It's the same size as the Drogue one. Uh, that has more to do with the tube diameter than it does with the size of the parachute you're putting on there. Um, nose cone. Uh, it is a, again, an all fiberglass nose cone. There's no metal tip on the front of it. Some of these high powered kits have an aluminum tip on it. Uh, that helps when you're going supersonic and stuff like that. But it's not really necessary on uh, like a 54 millimeter motor round. You know, once you really get into the 75s and the 98 millimeter motor rounds, you start going supersonic a lot more often. It, it's it's a little bit better. Uh, you do have to <coughs> epoxy a bulkhead in, which is, it's not that big of a deal. Um, in fact, uh, it allows you to do certain things like if you want to replace this bulkhead with like half inch plywood. And then come in with uh, screws on the side so you can actually remove it and adjust the weight in the nose cone. <clears throat> it allows for that. Um, comes with a nice eye bolt in the front here. It, it went together fairly quickly and easy. Um, it's a good nose cone, what can I say? Uh, it does not come, although you'll see in the build video, he recommends using <coughs> uh, 256 nylon screws as uh, shear pins for this and then removable rivets for part of it. That's what these, if I get close, you can see these bigger holes are for the removable rivets. Um, that works really, really well, uh, especially in this rocket. Um, the fiberglass threads really well for the nylon screws and the removable rivets. Uh, <coughs> they're a good way of holding this on. Uh, the one Thing I don't like about removable rivets is you're gonna end up tearing up your paint job trying to get them out. They are a pain in the butt. I have gotten to the point where I'll just take a, I think it's either an eighth, I think it's an eighth inch drill bit, and I'll just drill through the center of the uh, removable rivet to get rid of it because it's just that much easier. Um, so the nose cone attaches with shear pins, and the nose cone will actually fly off. This will stay attached to the electronics bay. And you can see this electronics bay is a tighter fit. And then the bottom comes off too. Uh, for the money, it is an incredibly solid rocket. It is uh, It can take punishment. Uh, if you actually watch uh, Tim Van Milligan's video, his rocket actually, uh, I think only the... Uh, the motor charge went off and not the uh, main chute charge went off, so it hit the ground pretty hard, but there's basically only cosmetic damage to it. Which is cool, you know you're getting a very, very durable kit. Uh, for I think it was like 260 bucks I got the kit. It was very, very solid. There was only, uh, as far as what you needed to put it together, you need epoxy, um, 5 minute or 30 minute. Preferably a longer cure epoxy is better. I actually used G5000 rocket epoxy, which is a really long cure time. Um, <clears throat> but I had the time to put it together. So I went that way, and I wanted to try a new epoxy. It is a, all in all, it's a really, really solid kit. I'm very, very pleased I got it. There are a few things I don't like about it. I don't like the parachutes. Um, uh, what is it? Oh, the threaded rod I didn't like. I would prefer Kevlar, but Kevlar, again, it's another expense. Uh, all in all, this rocket is fairly solid. I'd give it more like a 4 out of 5, uh, or a 4.5 out of 5, not 4 out of 5. Um, all of those things are easily replaceable and easily upgradable when you have the money and you want to do so. Uh, it doesn't come with motor retention, which is fine. Most other high-power rockets don't come with motor retention. Uh, so you're looking at... An aero pack retainer for this, I want to say, is 38 extra bucks. 
you got to buy electronics for it, which is you're not you're not going to find electronics packaged with a kit. Uh, you're looking at uh, I think at least eighty bucks for dual employment electronics, and then the various bits and bobs, the terminal connectors, which are actually optional. Uh, all that other stuff is only a couple of bucks. You walk out of here three hundred, three hundred twenty-five bucks. You get a fifty-four millimeter fiber mount rocket with a fiberglass, all fiberglass. It's just a beast. I put this up. Uh, the very first rock uh, engine I put in here was an I-140 Aerotech VMS motor. It was a windy day, like literally there was a storm coming on. I had to launch it because we had heard uh, thunder in the distance. Uh, it was still fairly clear where we are, but launched it in fairly high winds. An I-140, it only went up about 700 feet. Popped the, uh, the drogue in the main at the same time, which is exactly what it was supposed to do, because 700 feet was my, uh, my main deploy. Um, so it flew, and it flew fairly well in that eye, although that's a, that's kind of a baby eye. Um, a full eye would have been better and in better conditions. It probably would have gone 13, 1400 feet, which is uh, kind of low for this rocket. The next time I launched it, I put it on the Aerotech K535 DMS. Mainly, I'm using these DMS motors because I don't have any 54 millimeter casings. I don't want to borrow, uh, borrow one. So it limits what I can put in it, but I wanted to put a K motor in it. It is kind of a baby K motor, but it's still a K motor. Again, it was high wind conditions, but it went up 4,000 feet. <clears throat> and there's video of that launch, which I'll link in here as well. Uh, so that's it for the Apogee Components Level 2 rocket. Uh, if you like these videos, please... Uh, like them and subscribe to my channel. There will be more of these. Uh, I'll probably have a lot of, over the winter, more build videos and more review videos, not so many launch videos. This is, I live in Michigan and October come, kind of gets hard to uh, start launching rockets uh, consistently because the weather's usually crap. Uh, that's all for now. I will see you in the next video. All right, I just wanted to mention a few more things about the kit that I forgot while I was doing it. Um, it doesn't really change my rating on the review, but there are a few other uh, things I want to mention. First is when the kit was first designed, it had beveled fins. It no longer has beveled fins. Now, that isn't that big of a deal. Mine doesn't have the beveled fins. It flies, it flies fine, but there is the slot that's cut in the tube for that. Um, that slot is cut with a like a end mill or a router, and it leaves a round top to it. Well, the beveled fin fit in there fine, but mine did not. I had to grind it out a little bit, and that's a bit tough with fiberglass. Fiberglass is a very hard material. Um, but that didn't really take much more than a dremel and a grinding bit, um, and only a couple minutes worth of work to actually get that to fit. Uh, the other thing... I forgot to mention, and this is another nitpicky thing, is that it only has two centering rings. I prefer having three on high-power rockets. What this allows you to do is when you're building the rocket, you can put the four and the middle one in and set the uh, the motor mount tube where you like it um, and let those set and cure the epoxy cure there. And then when you mount your fins, you have access through the back of the rocket to put internal fin fillets on them, which makes the fins stronger uh, without you know, the tube wobbling around or being misaligned or anything, because those two will hold the center tube, the motor mount tube, uh, you know, in the right spot. Uh, this is actually kind of a minor concern. Um, I like, like I said, I launched this thing on a K motor. It went up 4,000 feet in a high wind condition. I have video of it. You'll see in the video, the fins do not flap around at all. They're dead straight all the way through that flight. I don't really think it's going to be that much of an issue. I will fly the rocket probably next year on some higher power K motors. Unfortunately, the other thing I don't like about the, uh, well, it's not that I don't like it about the rocket. You'd have to make the rocket significantly longer to do this. But you can't really fit six uh, grain casings from CTI or the lo or longer casings from CTI or the, like the Aerotech L motor. Um, for example, my rocket from the uh, from the end of the motor mount tube 
to the bottom of the eye bolt on the eBay is 25 inches, which is exactly the length of the Aerotech L1000 DMS motor. So I can't actually fit that motor in there to really give it a test. Um, but uh, And you want a couple, at least like six inches or something like that, so you have room to put the drogue chute and some other stuff. You don't have this big, long thing taking up the middle of the rocket. Um, so keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to launch all 54-millimeter motors on here, uh, just most of them. Um, yeah, that's about all I wanted to add to this. <laughs> 